jump out there and do some crazy stuff and, and put my and, and compromise my family. Because if you got a family, if you're single, you can do some crazy stuff. Oh boy. I start sweating on that one. I'm serious. But when you're married, you gotta have a conference call. <laughs> you know, I was thinking about so and so. We need to, you know, get our heads together and try to figure out what's the right course of action. You just can't just I don't will. Say I'm gonna drop X amount of dollars over here for something that has no relation to the whole, to the house, to to, to, to your unit. We are right on the edge of a new awakening, a new reformation. We are leaving behind an old story and embracing a new story. That's why I say we got to hear the call. We got to experience the touch and pursue the path. We have an opportunity to put this building over here. Uh, we got our problem this building. But the chairs ain't filled. That's, that's, your, that's your perception. But you want people to knock, the, knock on the door and tell you, I need to get in for us to make a decision and say, you know what, we, need, we still need room to make pre preparations for what I'm seeing in the spirit. I'm seeing some things that's bigger than this house. There's some things that need to be stirred in this region. Really. And we need a base. It's not just a church. It's a base. It's a center. It's not just a church. So we're not just going to relegate that that, that property to two days out of the week. You lost your mind. We got seven days out of the week. If you if we got people here that got some viable desires and say, you know what, Apostle, I was thinking about so and so. And they say, well, what day is it? Thursday. Well, I don't think we got anything going on Thursday. Well, let's get it up. It may be a Wednesday. Well, we can't do it on Wednesday. Unless you can do it in the morning. There's ways around it. We gotta have vision. We gotta have purpose. You get what I'm saying? We just can't sit here and fossilize. We just get old. Let time go by. You say, well, I, I, I don't have anything. Well, if you find a friend in this ministry or any other ministry, it's not just about Do something with them. You get the same reward. We just think because we because we wasn't a creator or the originator. I don't know where that came from. That, that came from the world. Oh, well. Yeah. If you want to live a life that is above the systems of, of the world, a life not limited by your biological or geographical orientation, we must live within the boundaries of the preceding world. Go to Psalms 119 and 130. This is what I'm talking about. When we talk about bathos, going into the mysteries of God, going into the things that God prepared for us from the foundation of the world, that's basically what I'm talking about. Then one step at a time. Because most of us, if we're honest, we can hear him in doing some things. You know, you can hear him. You, you just know it's like, man, uh, uh, you can hear it in your belly. I don't know what, how he talks to you, but I know how he talks to me. I get frustrated. I get bored. And then I'll start hearing, anybody ever heard this? Maybe he talked to you on this stuff. You ever heard that sound and you said, what is all this for? <laughs> anybody ever heard that before? You know you heard it. Yeah. Anybody, what is all this for? Just going through this thing all over and over and over, just coming to church, just picking up stuff, just sitting on the front seat, sitting on the back seat, sitting on the middle seat, sitting to the left, sitting to the right, sitting on the third row, sitting on the fifth row. Times pass it, but they told you, they told you, said, you know, you got to stay in the church because if you don't stay in the church, you won't make it in. So you got to stay in the church. Don't have to change, you just got to be in the building. You ain't got to commit to anything, you just got to go according to the bylaws. You got to tie you got to love everybody. You do all those things and you'll get in. There's no problem. That's not what God called us to do, to get in. He called us to get over and move over and reign over. And I said, get over. I'm talking about getting over the hump. We ain't supposed to wait till the next life to have life. Amen. He came to give us life now. He didn't come to give us life later. later. And it's up to us. The quality of my life is Dependent upon my reaction or my, my behavior towards the things of God. My response to what God is saying will determine the level and quality of my life. Just hearing a word from something or about something doesn't quantify you to change. 
<laughs> Please understand that. You got to buy the truth and sell it now. You know what that means? I got to invest in what I heard. Yeah. I got to put a value, a price tag on what I heard. I heard something that I heard today, something that came out of his mouth, and I'm going to invest in it. They don't, they don't mean you have to come up here and put money up here. You probably be pretty nice. But you don't have to do that. Amen. I ain't going to lie. You know, all right. You know. But it doesn't mean that. It, it simply means you put value on it. And you know how you put value on something you heard? You can't wait to apply. I want to prove it. I heard what he said. I'm, I'm going to buy the truth and sell it tonight. I'm not going to make it a blue light sale. You know, we put it on the back burner and say, I'm just going to wait till it pan out. we got a pan out ministry. <laughs> Look at this. It said, the entrance of thy words give it light. It gives it understanding unto the simple. So the more word I have, the more understanding I have. The less word I have, Less understanding I have. Right? And we're not just talking about any type of thing. We're talking about that uh, when we talk about nevertheless that thy word. It's a whole other level that we have to get an understanding. But Mrs. Bible says it this way. Break open your words. Let the light shine out. Let ordinary people see the meaning. Ooh, ooh, ooh. See the extra on ordinary and the super on natural. This is us working with God and God working in us. That's what he wanted to get us to, y'all. You're not doing this thing on your own. The voice said, when your words are unveiled, light shines forth. They bring understanding to the simple. That's what we got to have. Amen. I don't know where that starts to be. Uh, oh, break. There you go. Break open your words. <laughs> Let the light shine out. Let ordinary people see the meaning. I believe that. I believe that when we become a deep people, it's not in vocabulary. It's not because you pull up with a Hebrew and Greek. We become deep people because things break on. And then all of a sudden, there's a rhythm to our walk with the Lord. And it ain't just bad and you have to tell everybody what God is doing for you and you look at me and look at us and we're moving on up like the Jeffersons and ain't all of that. Because most of us, we, we rate our spiritual growth by the things we get. Am I right? We change up. I'm blessed. If I get a better car, God bless me. We tell everybody that. Look at me. Praise the Lord. Am I right? Get a bigger house. Oh, look at this. Look at this. Look at this. Well, we forget. Luke 12, he tells us about the guy that looked at all his stuff. And then God told him to say, Thou fool, your soul is going to be required of you. Because you're still looking at stuff. God didn't call us to look at stuff. Stuff is not. Stuff is provision. It's not my vision. It's not my purpose. It's, it's a means to the end. I say that. But if, 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 if I was measured on my house, I'd be in trouble. <laughs> That's what he said? Wow. <laughs> it's the man that's in here that's bigger than that house. I got a big man in here. That, that house, okay, you can do what you want to do. I can tell you square footage. You can't measure. You, know, you can measure a house in square footage, but you can't measure wisdom and knowledge and understanding in square footage. I'm telling you, saints, God wants us to launch out. He wants us to hang out. Not, not only launch out from the lane, he wants us to hang out in the deep. Tell your neighbor, he wants us to hang out in the deep. That's where he wants us to go, y'all. He wants us to go out there. But if we don't change our thinking, we won't be able to make that move. We'll, our life will always be on pause. Time will keep going. We'll get it grayer, thicker. <laughs> huh? Then you start shedding. All that other stuff. Because time to make a decision for you that you won't make a decision for. You say, well, I ain't going to make a decision. I refuse to let time make a decision. I don't want to do anything because I have to. That's why I'm not, I don't want to get a building because I have to. I want to get a building because I want to. And I can feel the Lord leading us to. I don't, I don't want to have to leave a house because I have to. 
I don't want to have to give up a car because I have to. I want to be able to say I give it up because I just want to. <laughs> to me, that's prosperity. Now you can talk about fiscal prosperity, whatever your prosperity may be, but prosperity to me is when I can make the decisions when I have to. No, when I want to. If I want to get a, 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 a dryer, I need to get a dryer because that one's just on the last leg. I'm not gonna let. I'm gonna have to worry about the leg coming on. I mean, seriously, that's what most of us buy things when it's dilapidated and, and broken and you can't be used anymore. That's when we say, "Well, I guess that's time to get a dryer." When you heard it shaking like this, you try to sleep and it's making all kind of moves on the floor. Did you? <laughs> Am I right? Then you force to sell. When you could have took your time. Then you're gonna make a decision that's not right. And hurry on the side. And then regret gonna show up. Hurry on the side. And regret will show up. They, they power to you. You're right behind it. Very be there, then all of a sudden, great, not good, Remember me? That was my twin. That was Harry, but I'm regret. <laughs> Let me move on. <laughs> it's the truth, though. Right? What, see, but see, once, once, you, once you deal with or address poverty, you can see hurry and regret when it comes. When you got the upper hand on property, say, I'm not going to allow, you know what I'm saying? But that comes to, uh, you know, maybe I'll talk about that sometime soon about dealing with the finances. There's a certain measure and a certain realm that you can be free. That don't mean you can just go get a yacht. Come on. What you need a yacht for? <laughs> huh? So you go up to Chicago every time to time? Huh? And you, you know, somebody says, I'm going to get a yacht. Like, you don't need no yacht. If you're in Florida, yeah, get a yacht. You got water all over the place. You know, we, we, we invest in stuff that has no relevance. And normally it's because of peer pressure. Mm -hmm.